So, this week I want to take a look at uh, two pretty unusual characters in English literature, both of them very, very famous. I don't know if you've heard of uh, John Milton of the 17th century, but his reputation was for a long time considered to be equal or second only to Shakespeare. He's, his star has gone down a bit, I suppose, in recent times, but he still has many uh, admirers. And uh, William Blake, who is a, a very remarkable character. Uh, at the time, people just thought he was mad. Um, these days, uh, there are those who think he's a, a wonderful genius, uh, not just a, a genius as a, a writer, but um, some people claim him as the best painter, the best artist that, that has ever lived, uh, the best English artist, at least, that has ever lived. So uh, he's highly respected as an artist as well as a, 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 a poet, particularly a poet. I mean, some prose writings, but mostly poetry. So well, both of these writers had a very, very strong connection with the Bible. Milton, uh, well, first off, he was, a, he was, broadly speaking, a Puritan. He supported Oliver Cromwell in the Puritan Revolution. He even went so far as supporting the uh, beheading, chopping off the head of the, of the king. But uh, later on in his life, he stopped going to church altogether. And uh, he doesn't fit easily into any of the kind of, you know, groups of Puritans that, that we, you know, that, that, that survive, for, we, 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 that we kind of have a, all these different types of dissenters and Puritans and people who didn't accept the basic Church of England. Uh, there were many varieties of them. Uh, he doesn't really fit into any of those groups. Um, I think you'll see as we go on that he's got a very interesting and unusual way of looking at the whole thing. And uh, Paradise Lost is his epic poem, uh, still considered one of the great masterpieces of English literature. There was a, uh, another work called Samson Agonistes, which is of equal, well, certainly slightly less uh, famous perhaps, but of e equal uh, stature, I would say. Um, kind of on the same sort of level as, as Dante or something like this in Italian literature, uh, really writing something big, okay, writing about, you know, what it's all about, everything. And uh, he, he's a figure, as you can see from his dates, 1602, 74, he's from the 17th century, William Blake is from the 18th, but there's a strong connection between the two, which is why I'm... Uh, putting them together here today. Blake was heavily influenced by Milton, as well as being very influenced by the Bible, not always in a positive way. He, he is a kind of rebel figure, a sort of revolutionary, really. Mm. And as you can see, his dates put him in the uh, 18th and, and, and early 19th centuries. He also spent several years writing and illustrating a long poem called, called Milton, with a series of uh, 12 illustrations also of, Par of Milton's poem, Paradise Lost. So that, that gives you a sense of how much he admired Milton and how much he was influenced by Milton's work. So it's these two characters today that I want to take a look at and show how they came up with something really quite interesting. And what it, I think, shows is the way that the Bible is used by people as, as something that they, they don't they don't follow it like a set of rules because you can't in a way. I think we've talked about that, that it, it's not really a, a set of rules that you can follow. It's, it's something to make people think and to build on and to, to, to develop from. Um, if you're thinking in terms of morality and ethics, it would be a basis for moral debate. 
But that's not really what either Milton uh, or Blake are so interested in. It's not the moral questions or it's, it's the, 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 the meaning of it all, the, the, the sense of what it's all about. Uh, this whole existence of ours, what are we doing here? And, uh, well, let's, let's just sort of develop the, 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 show you a little bit about how they, they um, started. Uh, we'll start with Milton and his creativity. Um, yeah, both of them, Blake and Milton, are rebels of a sort. They're both, you see, you've got Milton supporting the, the, the Puritan Revolution, Milton supporting Oliver Cromwell and, uh, you know, beheading the king, and Blake, at the time of the French Revolution, um, supporting the American, again, the American War of Independence from Britain, and uh, politically revolutionary. Uh, he wasn't an activist, he wasn't actively involved with sort of political movements, but in, in his writing, he supports these things. All right. The big stuff. In the Bible, uh, God creates the world using uh, a compass. It's a, it's a little passage from the Bible. Uh, he, he's sort of measuring out the world in his creation. Kind of uh, This is Blake's painting of this. It's called The Ancient of Days. Uh, the Ancient of Days is a name given to God in the book of Daniel, in the Bible. And wisdom, in, in that uh, description of the, the um, God with his compass in the Bible, uh, wisdom is personified as a woman and described as having been there with God right from the beginning. Uh, when he's doing this, when he's creating the world like this. So I know we, we're familiar with the creation as it is in Genesis, probably. We sort of more or less know a little bit about that. Uh, the idea that he's sort of measuring out the world is something that, that uh, perhaps you haven't come across before. Well, it's like this. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old, in the Bible. We have it like this. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth, wa the earth was. Or in this case, meaning before, before ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no mountains, no, no sorry, no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, but there was wisdom. All right, this is wisdom speaking. I was here from the beginning with God. And when he prepared the heavens, I was there. And then the compass, when he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he, when he started measuring out the chaos and making it into a world of order, wisdom was there. Uh, together with God. So wisdom is uh, described as having been there right from the beginning in, in the Bible. Uh, it's, it's expressed like that. So, Milton takes that scene from the Bible and uh, he describes it in his own way. He took the golden compasses prepared in God's eternal store to circumscribe this universe and all created things. One foot he centred and the other turned round through the vast profundity obscure. One foot he centred. You know compasses have these two parts. One foot he centred and the other one he turned. Okay, so the centred one marks, you know, it's the sharp point and then you use the pencil bit to go. You, did, you all did geometry at school, didn't you? <laughs> So it's, it's just that. Um, round through the vast profundity obscure, marking out, you know, the, the shapes of the, of the planets of the world, and, uh, and said, thus far extend, thus far thy bounds, this be thy just circumference, O world. This is, this is how I measure you up, and this is how I measure, you know, and thus God the heaven created, thus the earth. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit from uh, Paradise Lost, where... Milton is giving his description, taking it from that bit of the Bible, and showing you know, how God made the, the world with his, with his compasses. Okay? Uh, 
There are all sorts of things I could have focused on when it comes to Milton and Blake of the Bible, but I'm focusing on this particular idea of the compasses and the creation like this, and let's just follow it through and see where this idea takes us. Let's have a nice... Ooh, that's a pretty loud one this time. Turn the volume up. Fair bit. Now, the, the, the idea of creation, okay, it's, it, it, it's sort of, uh, it's, almost sci it's almost like our modern science, it's sort of explosive creation. Um, and what, what, what Milton says he's doing in his poem, he famously says he's going to justify the ways of God to men. He wants to explain why God created this world. Not, you see, the Bible doesn't even ask that question, does it? The Bible just says God made the world in, you know, seven days like this. On the first day he did this, on the second day, it doesn't say why. I mean, what, what's the, what, what are we all doing here? What's the point? Okay? Um, Mil, Mil, <laughs> Milton's got more of a sense of like, it's not just good enough that the Bible says that he did it like that. What, 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 there, there's some further mystery here. Milton always wants to push things back a little bit further and say, well, what was there before all of this? And why did he do it? You know, what, what was the point? I mean, what, what, what What's it all about? Okay, so uh, Milton gets involved in thinking about what happened before God created this world, before Adam and Eve. Well, what made him create this world? What made him even want to? And so when he says he's going to justify the ways of God to men, uh, he's looking at uh, the way that God created the world, and he's trying to think about the reasons behind, or the reason behind God creating this world. Now, he really struggles, like a lot of people before him and a lot of people after him, with evil. I mean, we've looked at suffering, and that, that was another question of how did suffering come into the world? And the usual, the biblical answer is it came in through sin. All right, it came in because Adam and Eve uh, were naughty, and that, that apple and that brought suffering into the world. It's not part of God's creation, it's just something that humans have brought on themselves. Um, evil in, is it in the same sort of way. It can't really, according to the Bible, it can't really be part of God's world, because everything that God made was good. Okay, uh, in the first chapter of Genesis, uh, we're told at the end of each step, uh, God saw that it was good, God saw that it was good, it was all good. God, God didn't make evil, so where did it come from? All right, um, and it clearly it, it seems to have come before humans because it's there in the snake. Where, where did the snake get it from? Okay, so he's dealing with a theological problem here, and he deals with it artistically and poetically. He deals with it through uh, this extraordinary uh, Paradise Lost epic poem that that, that he that he wrote. Uh, so we're not told that anything. Bad was made by God, and we're left with the problem of where the snake came from and how the snake uh, got evil, because obviously the snake tempts uh, Ad, Ad, Eve uh, to take the apple. Uh, the snake is very often seen as Satan, the devil, in, some, in, a sort of, in the shape of the snake. So how did that happen? Well, uh, hello? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's happening here? Uh, okay, um, well, basically, Milton sort of looks at some little hints in the Bible, and the way he pieces it together and imagines it is that originally there was God up there in the kingdom of heaven, right? And uh, everything was hunky-dory, and uh, there was no evil. Everything was great. Um, and then uh, you've got Satan or Lucifer, and that is, of course, the devil... All right, Satan, Lucifer, these are just different names for the devil, um, was one of God's angels, and indeed the greatest of all the angels. Now, this is sort of implied in the Bible. It's not quite clearly stated, but there are little hints. Uh, certainly, uh, you, we've got the idea that um, God kicked out some of the angels and that they then became devils. Uh, in fact, yes, yes. So, uh, all right. 
By turning against God, Satan or Lucifer destroys God's plan. God's got this plan that we're all going to live happily together in heaven, me and the angels, and it's all going to kind of be a, a wonderful kind of existence. Uh, but Lucifer or Satan turns against God, feels that God's being too bossy, uh, wants to be in control. And, and Satan thinks, well, why, why should you be the one in control? What's, you know, what made it so that you're the one that's running all the whole show? Um, and so God gets angry with Satan and kicks him out of heaven. And then Satan, together with the third part of heaven's sons, that's one third of the angels, uh, they all go uh, into their own underworld kingdom, or hell. And a lot of Paradise Lost is describing how Satan gets the other angels, who are now devils, gets them together, and they build their own kingdom of hell. That's all they can do. They, they, they've been kicked out of heaven, and so they build their own kingdom of hell. And so a large part of Paradise Lost tells a story that's sort of not really in the Bible. No little hints that, that okay, maybe that, that's right, but it's not completely clear. But he, he puts it together in that way. So God's original plan has been messed up by Satan, so God now has to have a fallback plan. This is his sort of second plan if the first one doesn't work. Plan B. We are God's plan B, according to... Uh, Milton. Plan B is make a world uh, for man and create Adam and Eve to live in that world. And then sort of, if everything goes well and uh, they, can, they come along nicely, then they can be, they can take up the part that Satan and the other angels who got kicked out, they, they can fill up that gap and they can take that part and then they can all be in heaven together. Okay, man will take the place of Satan and the other fallen angels and dwell in heaven with God. But <laughs> even plan B doesn't work out, does it? Because the snake comes along. So uh, God is um, <coughs> thwarted once again. <coughs> Satan's there in the form of the snake, once again trying to mess up God's plans. Okay, so... Because Adam and Eve listen to Satan and they eat the forbidden fruit, they have to leave the Garden of Eden, and God's plan B equally doesn't work out. He now has to come up with a plan C. Okay? Uh, <coughs> there you go. Out you go. All right? The angel uh, is uh, sending Adam and Eve out of paradise because they, they are not up to it. They, they, were, they were God's hope for uh, creating a new harmony, uh, but uh, Adam and Eve uh, were tempted by the snake, and so they have, to, they have to be thrown out of paradise, and God sort of has to think again and come up with another plan to try to make this harmony that, that he wanted to make, this heaven that he wanted. So here's his, his, his next plan, of course, is Jesus Christ. He's going to send his own son, Jesus Christ, and Jesus is going to die to save mankind, so that mankind will be able to join God in uh, the kingdom of heaven. And then, in that way, uh, the, the gap that was created when Satan and the other angels uh, went to hell, uh, that gap will be filled by a redeemed humanity, redeemed by Jesus Christ, who is going to sacrifice himself. So it's a very original idea, isn't it? He's come up with a whole way of understanding what the story of the Bible is, what's going on behind the Bible story, why it's like, why he made the world uh, and put Adam and Eve in, in the Garden of Eden, and, and why Jesus Christ came down. And, and so he's, he's justifying the ways of God to, to men. He's, he's explaining what's going on behind the Bible story, which just tells you what happened, but doesn't try to find a reason for why it happened. And Milton is obsessed with trying to understand, well, yeah, but why did he do that? Why did he want to make a world anyway? You know, why did he want to uh, create, you know, the world and, and, and send his son to be killed on this planet? You know, why? Okay? So, again, we've got a painting by Blake here. Uh, it's uh, William Blake's Michael, uh, the, the archangel Michael, is talking to Adam and telling Adam uh, what's going to happen in the future. All right. Um, Milton's Paradise Lost 
ends before Christ arrives on the scene, uh, but Michael is there explaining that Christ is going to come. So uh, here's one of Blake's paintings illustrating the scene with Michael uh, here on the, on the right of the picture, the angel telling uh, Adam, uh, you know, what's going to happen and Jesus there on the cross in the middle. So um, here's Blake illustrating Mil Milton's uh, scene. Okay, so let's tie that in with the political situation that's going on at the time. You've got this Puritan revolution going on in the middle of the 17th century, uh, mostly because the king was being very stubborn. King Charles was saying, I am king because God chose me to be king. It's called divine right. Um, I'll write that up for you, divine right. And uh, a lot of people are getting fed up with him because he's, uh, he doesn't think he has to explain himself to anybody. I'm king because God chose me. If you don't like it, well, go home. And that's exactly what the politicians had to do. He closed the Houses of Parliament and said, go home. He only had to open Parliament when he needed money to raise for taxes. He had to get the approval of Parliament for that. Um, and uh, they wouldn't agree, and most of, many of them were Puritans at the time. Many of the Parliament um, members were uh, Pur Puritans, and they wouldn't agree, so they, start, they actually opened up a war against the king, which ended with the king getting his head chopped off. Well, At the same time, you've got Milton building up on the creation myth of Genesis, trying to explain why God made this world in that way. And uh, how does that sit with a, the, the context of the revolution, the, the, the Puritan revolution? Well, it doesn't sit very comfortably, really. Uh, if you put these religious themes into their uh, social and political context, into the context of the Puritan Revolution, you realize that Milton's quite conflicted. And he's telling, this, he's telling the story of Satan rebe rebelling against God against the background of Oliver Cromwell rebelling against King Charles I. And in real life, who did he support? He supported Oliver Cromwell against Charles I. In Paradise Lost, He's supposed to be justifying God. He's not supposed to be standing up for Satan and saying, good old Satan, you know, <laughs> fighting against authority. But can you see how, you know, he's, in, his, uh, in his poem, he's doing the opposite, or he's trying to do the opposite. He's trying to explain why God was right. But if you, uh, if you look at the political situation, there's Charles saying, the king, saying, I was chosen by God. And there's Oliver Cromwell chopping his head off. And in real life, Milton is supporting Oliver Cromwell. Can you see that there's a kind of a conflict going on there? That he's, he's in real life, he supports the revolution. He supports the rebellion. All right? he, but, but in his poem, he's uh, trying to support God and show how God is, is right. Now, it's a rather curious fact that a lot of people, as they read Paradise Lost, they, think, they, they start thinking, yeah, Satan, good old Satan. <laughs> as if Satan was kind of, not exactly Satan was Oliver Cromwell, um, and, and that Milton directly supported him consciously. Well, yeah, in Paradise Lost, he's defending the actions of God, but in the political upheavals, he's defending the actions of Oliver Cromwell. God is the authority figure in uh, Paradise Lost. Oliver Cromwell is the authority figure in the, uh, or the, the, re the rebel against, initially against the authority figure, and then becomes the authority figure himself in, in, in England in the politics of the time. And uh, yeah, in 1649, Milton published uh, um, a book with a Greek title, Iconoclastes, uh, in defense of the beheading of King Charles. He was not just you know, supporting the, the revolution, he, he defended Charles having his head cut off. 
which was a pretty bloody affair. As, as we learned, you know, in those days, they did things in a pretty nasty way, right out there in public, chop the king's head off and hold it up for everybody to see. That's the way it was. I won't make any comments about whether it might be good to go back to those days in view of certain developments in the American elections, but I don't suppose 